We'll read a verse from Genesis chapter 12. Genesis chapter 12. Now the Lord said to Abraham, Get out of your country, from your family and your father's house, to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. Hallelujah. Nation. This name is coming over and over in the, in the, in the worship. The Lord said, Every nation is going to bow down. You know, I see nations coming in this church. Many nation, nationality people coming and bowing down before God. Hallelujah. And lifting his name on high. This is the promised word. Every nation will bow down before God. Amen. Pakistan, Bangladesh, you name it, Somalia. Every nation you see in the, in the, in the world map will come down, bow down before the name of Jesus. Amen. Do you believe that? Amen. It doesn't matter. Now they are, you know, now there may be zero percentage of Christianity, but there will be a time that the word of God will visit every nation in this world. Amen. That is the power of the Holy Spirit. The end time, it will happen. And I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make you your name great and you shall be a blessing. God called Abraham and we know that, you know, that's, the, the, that's a, you know, this chapter is a game changer from, you know, till that time. There's a great name called Abraham that, that came up in the Bible. That's in Genesis chapter 12. And God called Abraham and he said, you know, he don't know anything about this. But he had not seen anything, not heard about such God. But he heard the voice, Bible says. And God spoke to him like this, Abraham, come to a place that I will show you. I'm going to show you. You don't know it. I'm going to show you. But I am calling you because I want to bless you. And then can you say, bless you. Bless you. You know, we were seeing with the problems. We don't know what it is. Sometimes we sing and we, we always we think blessings as as a lot of money. It's not like that. You know, greatest blessings that blessing that Abraham had was I will be with you. That is the greatest blessing. God Almighty with a man. That is the greatest blessing. Hallelujah. When we say blessing, that means God is with you. Means he will provide for you. Means he will protect you. He will show you the way. He will help you in everything. Hallelujah. You will not be ashamed. You will not go down. But he will be with you. You will trust everything to God. And that is called the blessing. Joseph was a blessed man. You know, he don't have anything. His pocket was empty. He was inside a prison. He was a blessed man. Why? God was with him. Amen. Jacob was a blessed man. Why? He was in sorrow most of the time. He was in hard work, hard day, but he was a blessing. Why? Why we call him blessed? Because God was with him. You know, the Lord changed his name. He said, I will bless you. Amen. When God is with a person, he is the blessed man. He is a blessed man. When the Lord Almighty says, I am with you, I will hold your righteous right hand. You know, I will hold you. I will be with you. That is the greatest blessing that we can have. And he's, um, uh, the Lord promised like this, I will make you a great and you shall be a blessing. And that is another one. To God, Abraham said, you know, I'm going to bless you. Now what will happen is, you will be a blessing. That is a promise of God. And out of every nation will be blessed. Every family will be blessed to you. That is a great promise. You know, when God blesses you, Bible says, when you read in the New Testament, in the, in the book of Peter, we see there's a, there's a verse called, God has called us to inherit a blessing. Inherit a blessing. You know, in the New Testament we see that. What blessing is that? The Lord Almighty being with us. He's the greatest blessing. I mean, and here it says, You will be a blessing to someone. 
you will be a blessing to someone. Amen. We all are called by God. That is the will of God. That is the plan of God. For you to be blessed and you to be a blessing. Amen. Can we say, for me to be blessed and for me to be a blessing. For me to be blessed me to be a blessing. I mean, God doesn't want anybody to just receive the blessing and sit there, keep quiet, nothing. He wants everybody to receive the blessing, be a blessing. Receive the blessings from heaven, now you be a blessing to somebody. Amen. One day or the other, wherever God is you, you can be a blessing. You can be a blessing. How? When you when you read the Old Testament, there, there is a there is a um, chapter that the Lord is uh, healing somebody called Naaman. You know, have you heard? Naaman was healed. A, a leper was healed because there was a servant girl in that house who said, "In our country, there is a prophet." Called If you go there, you will be healed. Amen. One word, the whole that that camp rejoice seeing the healing. You know, that is how you can bless somebody. Your one word can bless somebody. Your act can bless somebody. Your prayers can bless somebody. Visit someone, you can be a blessing. Amen. When God is calling you. He wants you to bless somebody. Pray for somebody. Fast for somebody. You will be a blessing. Even you don't have to be acknowledged. You don't have to be recognized. But you can pray for somebody. Lord, I bless that person. When God places you and blesses you with a job, you can bless that person. You can say, Lord, I bless that. You know, I've seen workplaces where, where people, people get together. And they will start saying every negative against the manager. They will say, oh, this manager is not good. Oh, that, that decision is not right. You know, the CEO is not right. The, that, that person is not right. It is not organized. Don't say that. Hallelujah. You hear everything. But what you and me are supposed to do is, we go to bless that place. So I bless this place. I bless the authority. I bless the CEO. I bless the place in the name of Jesus. And, and pray that Lord give wisdom to the authority. Lord give wisdom to that manager. Lord give wisdom to that CEO. Amen. You can be a blessing wherever you are. God called Abraham. Abraham, come, do this. Amen. See, when you know what the will of God for your life is, the will of God is you have to have experience you have that you should have that experience of blessing in your life you know how are we blessed our health is a blessing from god can we say our health is a blessing from god our wealth is a blessing from god our peace our family is a blessing from god our house is a blessing from god our car is a blessing when you use that car for to visit somebody for being a blessing with 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 what god has given you you know, with that help that you have, with that voice that you have, when you bless someone or pray for some pray for somebody, you're being a blessing for them. Amen. This is how we are we are converting our blessings to bless someone else. Converting our you know, it doesn't always mean that you give money. No, it's not about money. We always mix blessings and money. It's not like that. You visit someone. You tell the good news that Jesus Christ can save you. You say that, don't worry. You know, you are sick. I will pray for you. The Lord will heal you. One word. You can be a blessing to someone. You can be a blessing. You just do it. Amen. See, in the, in the book of Luke, chapter 22, we see Jesus, you know, making a prayer sometimes in a, such a way. Jesus was called, he was sent in this earth. In, a, in Mary's womb with a mission. And the mission was through him, every person in this world should be blessed. Amen. 
through him, every nations of the world should be blessed. Everybody. Every person who is born in this world shall be blessed by one name and that is the name of Jesus. And that is the mission. Amen. Whether you are born in the Old Testament or whether you are born in the New Testament, you will be blessed because of that one man's sacrifice. And that is the mission Jesus had. When Jesus came to this world, Luke chapter 22, he makes a prayer like this. Luke chapter 22 verse 41. And he was withdrawn from them about a stone throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not by my will, but yours be done. Amen. The problem is. The, the, when the Lord came, he says like this, he has all the authority in heaven. He says, don't you know that even now when I pray, legions of angels can come down. Don't you know? You mean that much authority Jesus has upon his shoulder. By his one word, he can change that thing. It is his own choice whether he should obey or not. That's why Philippians says he obeyed. He obeyed. It was his choice. And he chose to obey Father God. There was a, there was a choice in front of him. You know, but the Lord, you know, sometimes we always say God knows everything, right? We see that the Lamb was slain before the foundation. He knows everything. And that is beyond our you know, our thinking. Even though there is there is a free will in front of all of us. He knows the end from the beginning. He knows that Judas is going to betray him. Yet he loved him. He knows everything. You know, we can't, we can't explain. You know, it's, like, it's like teaching rocket science to a chicken. You are telling chicken how rockets are made. No way. Now they have their own limitations. It's the same way we are trying to figure out how God works. He doesn't know. You know, we cannot do that. The Lord Almighty has is full of wisdom and understanding. We don't know how it works. Yet he has given a free will for us to choose. Amen. He knows everything from the beginning. Everything. Because the revelation says he's Alpha and he's the Omega. Jesus says, I am the Alpha. I am the Omega. He knows everything. And when, when it comes here, he makes a prayer like this, Lord. If it is your will, let it be done. Amen. To do God's will, sometimes there is sacrifice. There is a sacrifice. There is a price to be paid. It's not easy. Every time. Getting up and doing what God wills. The will of God is. What is the will of God on Jesus? That through him. Every nation. Every individual. Have to be blessed. Amen. Now Jesus is kneeling down. And he is praying. You know. If Jesus has to do the will of God. And he has to pray such a prayer. How much we have to pray. We all have to pray. You know, without prayer. You cannot. Do the will of God. You have to say, Lord, make me a blessing. Hallelujah. And we pray that prayer. Lord, make me a blessing to someone. Lord, make me a blessing. Hallelujah. So that I may be a blessing to somebody in this place. I may carry one word. Maybe one word is in It's a blessing to someone. Hallelujah. One word. You know, many times in my life I have experienced. When someone just says a word. You know, it just converts you. It just encourages you. Amen. So one word from you, encouragement, a word of encouragement, a word of comfort, a word of prayer, it blesses somebody. And Jesus is saying, Lord, it is your will, Lord. I want to do your will. I want to do your will. Hallelujah. Christians, we have to understand one thing. When God is sending you to 
to a place. When God is blessing you with a family, when God is blessing you with health, with wealth, everything. Hallelujah. It is to do His will. It is to do His will. You know, what is the will? You have to be fruitful. You have to be blessed. You have to be a blessing to somebody. Be a blessing to somebody. When you go to your workplaces, look around that you can bless somebody. Maybe you can just give a coffee to someone and say, ah, God bless you. Or give a smile in the morning. A smile of comfort and encouragement. God bless you. Hey, Amen. Hallelujah. Don't put down anyone. But just encourage and say, God is with you. I'm going to pray with you. Or invite them to a, to a meeting, church meeting. Pray for them. Be a blessing to someone. Amen. So, Jesus prayed like this. Bible says, he knelt down and prayed, saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but your will be done. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. More earnestly. You know, sometimes the prayer changes Shifts gear. Everybody says shift gear. You know, in your prayer, it is like when you suddenly, when you are prompted by the Holy Spirit, when you make a statement, when you make a covenant sometimes, when you make a decision in your life, suddenly you feel that there is a shift happening in your prayer. Bible says in that prayer, suddenly it shifted. There was an angel of him and he started praying more earnestly. You know, every time when, when there is a shift happening, it will take you to earnest prayer, earnest prayer, earnest prayer. And when Jesus prayed that, you know, suddenly there was an angel appear. Angel appeared and started to, to strengthen him. Strength, we need strength from heaven. We need strength, you know, supernatural strength. Supernatural strength. Your, your enemy is not a natural enemy. Your enemy is a supernatural enemy, so you need supernatural strength. We all need supernatural strength. We have to ask God, I need the power of the Holy Spirit to defend this. I need the power to stop this, to, to go furthermore. I need your power. Amen. The name of Jesus Christ was, was um, in, from the beginning, we see in the Old Testament. The name of Jesus Christ. We'll just touch that. You know, why that why there is something special about this name. You know, the one who is praying in the garden of Gethsemane, it's not just normal, anybody. It's not John or, or Mark or Luke or James. No, it's not a normal human. He calls himself as somebody before Abraham. He says that I have seen Satan fall down from him. Man with great authority. He came with a great promise. Isaiah calls him, you know, the virgin will be born. He calls him, his name will be Emmanuel, Prince of Peace. And Jesus was named in such a way that he, by, by him, everybody will be saved. Jesus, Yahweh, you know, there's a rocket being launched now. <laughs> wow. Skillful, you know, you, we were talking about rocket science, chicken learning. Somebody is making rockets here. <laughs> so, so can we put our hands together, give glory to the Lord? What a wonderful God we serve. See, we see that when when uh, Jesus was, you know, his name was Yeshua. In the Hebrew, the name of Jesus is named as Yeshua. The one who is kneeling down to know the will of God, his name is Yeshua. Jesus in, in, in English. His Hebrew name is Yeshua. Yeshua in the Old Testament holds a great significance. You know, when, when, uh, when you read in, in the book of John, they named, uh, there, is a, there is a board on top of the cross. You know what that uh, wording was? The pilot, pilot named it like this. John chapter 19 verse 17. Jesus of Nazareth, 
king of Jews. He just put that just to mock him. You. you know, when you when you when you are longing to do the will of God, when you are longing to give your life to Jesus, to give glory to the Lord, everything, every incident in your life will be according to His will. When people try to mock Him, God turned it. He'll turn that into a blessing. When people try to mock him, God turned it into a prophetic realm. Prophetic, you know, very. When Pilate wrote that, well, the intention was to mock Jesus. What, what he did was, he wrote like this Jesus of Nazareth, King of Jews. In, in, in Hebrew, it is like this Yeshua at Nazareth, Melech Ha Yehudi. Hallelujah. It said like this. Jesus of Nazareth. King of Jews. But the Bible says. When the priests. And the people. The, you know people of the temple. They saw this boat. They, they were offended. They did not like that. They were offended. They came back to Pilate and said. You should not write that. Take that boat away. So why? No you should have to take that boat away. You should say that this man said that he is the king. Change the word. You know what happened? When they look from above, you know Hebrew words are written from your right to left. It's one of the one of the languages that you write from right to left. Arabic, Hebrew, there's another word I think Persian. They are written from right to left. And in that way, when they read that. The capital letters, the letters show one word. Yahweh. Yahweh. Yeshua. You know that wording was Yeshua ha Nazareth. Umalek ha Yehudi. When Pilate wrote that, these people see Yahweh and Jesus on the cross. They often may offend him. They say, How could this be? How could this be? He's a carpenter's son. And this Roman has put at board the say Yahweh. The word Yahweh is pronounced in the Old Testament. A name of God over and over many times. Yahweh God. The God who came. To Moses. In the book of Exodus, Moses asked one question to Lord. You'll read Exodus chapter 3, verse 30. And we have that. Exodus chapter 3, verse 30. Then Moses said to God, Indeed, I take to the children of Israel, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, God of your father has sent me to you, and you say to me, and they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? And God said to Moses, I am who I am. I am who I am. We know that verse. You know? I am who I am. And thus you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent you. Amen. I am who I am. A powerful statement. When you read the Bible in the English letters, you don't really mean, you don't need to really understand that meaning. When Jesus, when the Lord was speaking to Moses, he said like this, I am, Moses, who you believe that I am. I am who you want me to be. I am. In other words, if you believe, that I am a healer. I will be your healer. The Rafa. Yahweh Rafa. And if you want me to be your victory, I will be your victory. I will be Yahweh Nisi for you. Hallelujah. It's about what you believe. I want your I want to be your salvation. You want me to be your salvation? I will be your rock of salvation. Yahweh, who is my salvation. Hallelujah. David called him, he is my salvation. 
Because, you know, in the Old Testament, Abraham called me Yahweh Jireh. Hallelujah. Who you want him to be? That is the name. Today, when you read this passage, when you hear this, what do you believe that Jesus has to be for you? Who do you believe? If you believe that he is your healer, he will be your healer. If you believe that he will be my provider, my father, my Abba, he will be your Abba, he will be your father. And that is the peculiarity, that is the significance of that name. I am who I am. Hallelujah. I am. You know, in the Old Testament, there are many, many names you can see. One of the names is El Eloah. God mighty strong. That's pronounced in Nehemiah chapter 9, 17. Another word, another name is Elohim. God the creator. Mighty and strong. Everybody say Elohim. Elohim. El names. Some names are El names. El they all start with El, El Shaddai, Elohim. You know, there are significant words many times in the Bible. In the Hebrews, in the, in the English, you when you read, it's all Lord. You know, Lord, like we heard Adonai. Adonai means Lord. Adonai is also pronounced. That means Lord. In Hebrew, you know, often it's not Lord that has been used all the time. Some places it is Adonai. Some places it is L names. L. L means the Lord. But L means house of the Lord. Amen. Today we are going to study Hebrew before we leave this hall. You know? yeah. <laughs> Can you lift your hands and say hallelujah? It's such a wonderful God. So L names. There are many names. Elohim is one of them. El Shaddai means God Almighty. When they say God Almighty. El Shaddai. God Almighty. That is referred in Genesis chapter 17 verse 7 and Jeremiah 31 verse 30. El Elyon which is seen in Deuteronomy chapter 26 verse 9 which means most high God. Most high. El Elyon. And, and when that name is there, it means there is nothing about that, that name. That means most high. The one who is the decision maker. The one who decides everything. Every authority. Not even one leaf will fall off a tree without his knowledge. Not even your hairs will come down without his knowledge. Nothing will happen without his knowledge. And that is the meaning of this El Eloi. El Elio. Another word is El Roi. El Roy, God of sea, God who sees everything. The name was described by Hagar, you know, servant, maid servant of Abraham. She went to the desert and she was the one who, who called God El Roy. Genesis chapter 16, verse 13. El Olam, everlasting God, that is mentioned in Psalms 9. El Gibo. Mighty God, Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. Many names of the Bible, L names. And on the other hand, there is Adonai. That's, there's another word for Lord. Lord, God, Almighty, Adonai. Another word, another type of names is Yahweh names. That, that this, uh, this is another uh, way that Lord was pronounced. You know, Yahweh names. Is, is signifies how his attributes are, how he works, what is the nature of God, what is the attribute. He is a Rafa God. That's why he's a healer God. That means Yahweh Rafa. He meant God who is my healer. In other words, when you read um, that there are there is Yahweh Nisi, Exodus chapter 17, verse 15. Yahweh Makdesh, which means Lord who sanctifies. Yahweh Shalom, which means God of peace. Many names, many names. Yahweh Elohim, which, uh, which is in uh, Lord God. Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. Yahweh Signum, 
Jeremiah chapter 33 verse 16. Lord of our righteousness. Yahweh Roni. The Lord our shepherd. Psalms 23 verse 1. Yahweh Shammah. Ezekiah is killed. Chapter 48 verse 35. The Lord is the. Amen. You know. When you, when you see the, all those Yahweh names. It signifies what he does. What his nature is. He is a healer. He is a shepherd. He is a rock. Amen. When you say all those Yahweh names. When you say Yahweh Rapha. It is related only to healing. The problem with this name is. When you say Yahweh Ra, um, Yahweh Nisi it is related only to victory and when when it comes to the cross of Calvary this is very important when it comes to the cross of Calvary Pilate wrote such a word Yeshua no we will we'll do it in English Jesus Christ of Nazareth King of Jews. When the people saw that, they saw Yahweh name written on the cross. In those names, you know, in all the all the letters that Pilate has written in Hebrew, it included all the names of the Old Testament. Whether it is Yahweh names, Adonai. Whether it is, you know, because he's a king, he's a Adonai, Lord, and all the ill names, the Lord, everything came to one name on the mountain of Golgotha, to the name of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Whatever God wants to be, God desires to be, whether it be He. Whether it's to be giving victory, freedom, everything it came down to one place. And in that place, it is written Yeshua. Yeshua. Hallelujah. Yeshua, the one from Nazareth, is the King of Jews. Hallelujah. All authority is upon that name. Every authority is on the cross of Calvary. It, is, it comes to one place. Because of his sacrifice, because of his sacrifice, every nature, whatever God wants to do, will be done, will be done forever on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. When you look to that cross, when you call on that name, you know, the greatest miracle that we see is not a um, dead man be rise or, or somebody be healed, but the greatest miracle is. When a sinner calls upon the name of the Lord, he is changed, he is washed, he is cleansed. Hallelujah. That is the greatest miracle. When a sinner calls to the name of Jesus Christ, and that name forgives you, sets you free. Hallelujah. From the deepest pit of hell to the highest of course, you know, with Jesus Christ. That is the greatest miracle. And today, when we call this name, when we call this name, Yeshua, Jesus Christ, you have to know that every name in the Old Testament comes to that, comes in stands. Everything that God mentioned, it is all included. It is included, you know. Sometimes when you, when you get, you know, um, in um, offer, we get things in offer. When you buy this, you get Free, fifty percent free off on the next item, on second item, completely free. But when Jesus is sent to the Lord, to the uh, to the earth, God said, "When you take my son, you take all my names with him, all the names of of the Old Testament, all the names. Hallelujah! The name I am is with him, or the name." Yahuwah Sittano is with him, God Almighty. Everything is being given when you call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. This is the power of his name. 
this is the power and we see the name you know that name is kneeling down on Gethsemane he's kneeling down on Gethsemane and praying into the Lord Almighty hallelujah how much we have to pray we have to pray without prayer you cannot break things you cannot open doors without prayer God has called us to a narrow narrow way in this narrow way the the beautiful part is inside this narrow way there are great openings great ways great doors that God wants to open great doors in front of you mighty doors in front of you to be open hallelujah we want those doors to be open start praying in the name of Jesus start praying start praying spend time praying. know the know what the enemy wants to wants to do against you You know, temptations don't just come anyhow. Temptations don't just come. Discouragement don't just come. Sadness don't just come. Murmuring don't just come. No, there's a spirit behind it. You have to know that. To break it in the name of Jesus. Sickness don't just come anyhow. Don't just. You have to have victory over every such situation. By the power of God. You know, the enemy doesn't matter. You know, when you hear the word, enemy is not bothered about it. When you sing some songs, it doesn't bother you. It only bothers him when there is power of God manifested. When the power of God is manifested, it really bothers him. When the fire of God is manifested, we want the fire of God manifested. Say, hallelujah, I want to pray. I want to spend time in prayer. I want to spend time in worship. I want that power to be released in my life. Hallelujah. Can we all stand up now? Well, hallelujah. We give him glory. We give him praise. Lord, we stand, Lord. Father. Before the name above all names, Jesus Christ. And say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give glory to you, Lord. Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today, Lord, I pray about families in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to pray. Help us to be obedient. To know your will, Lord. Father. Help us, Lord. Father. Lord, while we bow, bow down, before you. Lord, we say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I give you glory. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Oh, hallelujah.